All right. Ta-da. <laughs> See? That's how, it, that's how it works. Well, I, right. I was on my laptop. It wasn't working. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. I mean, if can you raise volume a little bit, do you think? Uh, sure, maybe. Okay. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. So that's as All loud right. as it goes. Okay. So let's uh, let's make this the shortest interview in the history of martial art. <clears throat> Ultimately, isn't it all about mindset? Well, what moves the body? Right. Okay, that's it. Good. Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> no, guys, I'm just kidding. Um, so let me officially welcome everyone to uh, episode number five of the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues. Um, I call this one a special edition simply because um, Mr. Horton is not a Jeet Kune Do guy per se, but by the time we're done in another 50 minutes or so, you'll understand why he is actually a Jeet Kune Do guy, even if he himself doesn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I met, um, I met, I met Greg a, a few years ago, and I believe it was through initially through um, Neil Colliff, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And last week when I was talking to Mark Mills, your name came up again, and I thought, you know what, uh, Mr. Horton and I are overdue for a conversation. So he graciously accepted my uh, invitation to come on to uh, the, the dialogue show. So I have to start with a confession. When we first met and we first spoke, you um, introduced <laughs> me to, uh, 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 I think it was a three-pronged uh, concept. And I know that structure and emotion were in there, but then I forgot what the other stuff was. So sure. I called, uh, I, I, I spoke to uh, Helena Colliff and she filled me in. So it's structure, emotion, knowledge. And legacy. And legacy. Okay. Now, okay, four things. Break that down for me again. <laughs> That's a great question. <clears throat> so the structure... So at Mastery, all of our instructors teach from this perspective. So the first thing that we do is we get structure. So in our school, that's the set point. So we don't begin teaching or learning until we prepare people to accept the learning. Mm -hmm. so structure, boom. The second thing we add is emotion because studies have already showed neuroscience that when the brain and the energy in the body is high, the learning happens faster and the length of retention is longer. So okay. So we have structure, boom, we have emotion. And then the third thing is knowledge. Now you already know when you dive into something difficult or a compound or really challenging, the, the energy gets depleted immediately. Yeah. Right. So for somebody new doing um, uh, double stick drills, they'll, their brain will hurt when we get into yes. crossing patterns. So the energy immediately drops because they can't sustain the energy because that information is needed to mentally get through the difficulty of moving the stick. Right. So, okay. so think about it this way too at school. Think about school teachers in elementary schools. Structure, emotion, knowledge, and legacy. Where do school teachers begin in that process at school when they teach? Knowledge. You see right. the problem? You see the problem already? So we, we yeah, didn't get I, compliance oh, I see, oh, I see. And, and we haven't introduced energy, so we're relying on an eight-year-old child to have their own energy, and it's a big mistake. We have to energize them. That's why they're in our classes. So we, so we teach martial arts. So here it is, ready? If you have mm -hmm. structure, which is discipline, if you have emotion, which is passion, if you have knowledge, then you become a leader. Because yes. people want to follow discipline, emotional, who have a lot of drive in life, and also who have some knowledge about whatever area you're leading them in. When those three things are aligned, then you become a leader. Nobody wants okay. to follow an undisciplined person, right? Right. Now, see, what, what I find interesting, and this is something I've always found interesting in, in my interactions with you, you go structure, emotion, and that immediately makes me think in terms of the scene in Enter the Dragon, where Bruce Lee says to the student, we need emotional content, not anger. Mm -hmm. You see? So... That puts me then in mind. Here's a question I had for you. Um, you know who Brendan Burchard is? Sure. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. I remember once listening to Brendan talk about a thing called um, uh, proprietary language and frameworks. And I, I, I listened to what he was teaching and then I applied that to Jeet Kune Do and I thought, let me ask Greg this. Before, let's say, Neil Colliff, mm -hmm. had you heard in martial art the idea of the four ranges of combat or the five ways of attack? Not the five ways, but but maybe three ranges of combat, not the okay yeah. right see so so to me, what that indicates then is that Ji Kundo possesses a certain degree of proprietary language mm -hmm. because there 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 are phrases used um in in j k d that have now been exported to the martial art world at large, sure, sure, right that originated in 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 j k d Right. So I think then that we have structure. I, I believe that your teaching has more structure than you allude to. It has Wait. like the whole idea of JKD is to be formless. Right. Or mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> unfortunately, <laughs> I was going to make a joke. I won't do it. But there is very much a structure to the way uh, Sifu Neil teaches or you te There's very much a progression. I mean, you could align that word progression with structure. They, they have, right. they're very similar, right? So I think it very much is very structured. It's just not structured in the way that maybe there's uh, movements that are structured, but the thinking yes. is structured, right? The progression okay. is structured. I so see then, them all as the same thing. Right, so then would you say then that an element that's missing in, what would you say then is an element that's missing? Because as somebody who has peered into Jeet mm -hmm. Kune mm -hmm. what would you say then is, is a, a defect or something that's missing from the Jeet Kune Do approach that you've been um, uh, uh, introduced to? With, with regards to what? With what outcome? What result? Interesting. Ah. Yeah, okay, so that's where you start. Mm -hmm. What's the result? Mm -hmm. So let's say it's a guy who wants to, let's say it's a guy who wants to um, start a school. Mm -hmm. So he's got the certification, he's done the training, he's got the knowledge, he wants to start a school, it's just him. Okay? Okay. Right? So now he, so he's got the financial wherewithal to, uh, oh, and congratulations, by the way, um, for those of you who, who are chiming in, uh, Mr. Horton, it, when he jumps off from this meeting, he's got a meeting for uh, opening up school number seven. Yes, sir. Wow, that's excellent. Okay, so so this is this, so this guy is you, uh, twenty five years ago. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's just him, <clears throat> but he wants to open up. What what could he do? Sure. So all of the business elements, regardless if it's martial arts or uh, dry cleaning business, any business, they're all the same. They all have the same functions. I mean, that never changes. There's the mm -hmm. message, right? Attraction is the message. It's not only what the message is, but it's how it's delivered, what colors, what shapes, that kind of thing. For example, yeah. my logo, the mastery logo, it's, that's about 12 years old. And I had two fonts. I had the block font and the scripted font. We knew, we teach children, so who shops for children martial arts? It's mom. Dad doesn't mm -hmm. shop for it. So I went around with the book to everybody I could find and said, which logo do you like? All the women selected the script. All the men selected the bold. Now, we knew right. that the men weren't our target because they weren't going to bring their kids in. Mom does that shopping. So right. look who won. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I think same thing. Is, is it? Is it possible for you to stay closer to, because I get better audio from you when you're closer in? You should be, I'm in my ear pods right now. You should hear them through my ear pods. Okay. So, uh, so basically. Sounds better there. All right. So basically okay. it's really what you're trying to achieve, right? So we wanted, we knew we were trying to achieve attraction to mom. Yes. So what does mom want? Safety for our children, being able to protect themselves a little bit, by the way. It's not as big as what you think. They wanted a safe environment. They wanted them to learn. They wanted socializations. They wanted structure. They wanted discipline. They wanted confidence. So 
we did a poll not too long ago on my student page. There's about 2,000 moms on the page. And we asked, what part of class do you enjoy most? Self-defense was dead last. Yeah. Dead last. So, Interesting. You know, if you're defending yourselves three times a week, you don't have a martial arts problem. You have an attitude problem. If you're using your physical martial arts in a self-defense setting more than once, uh, I don't know, fill it in. Every three mm -hmm. years, every four years, mm -hmm. every 12 months, mm -hmm. that's, we have a different kind of problem. So anyhow, to circle back, with regards to Jeet Kune Do, what market are you trying to attract? Are you trying to attract the 25-year-olds, the 35-year-olds, the 45-year-olds, right? And they're all different. So um, a 25-year-old might be just getting out of college and just starting their career. A 35-year-old, well, probably has some kids at home. Some 45-year-olds, Kids are just in high school. Now the dad has time. Yeah. Uh, my daughter's two, so I did it in reverse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I think you have to really define that market to realize what, am, what, what result am I trying to achieve? Okay. Does that make sense? You know, that, yeah, that's interesting. See, because my, when, I thought, when I thought of the question, I was thinking more in terms of what he should do in running the school. We can't, get the, we can't get there yet. We haven't identified the market yet. The mar <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I know. Message, market, media. The, the, mar the marketing triangle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so then based on that, right, style doesn't matter. The art that you're teaching doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Okay. Then what accounts for the greater popularity of certain arts or certain styles <clears throat> compared to others? It's a great question. So it's about attraction. What attracts somebody to one thing over another thing? Uh -huh. What attracts somebody to mainstream versus something not mainstream? Right? You, you find these people, uh, they, they like this certain shoe because nobody has it like a skateboard shoe or something. And then the moment it goes mainstream, it gets out of boutique and gets into, you know, Macy's. All of a sudden that group doesn't want it anymore. They're on to the next thing that only a few people like. Right. I feel like that's a little bit of what JKD is about. It's a very small group that wants to be authenticated and wants to do that level of training. Um, where this other group, let's use Taekwondo, probably one of the largest <clears throat> martial arts based attraction in the world. It's, yeah. it's linear. It's one dimensional. It's really easy to teach. And it aligns with what a parent is looking for. Right. As opposed mm -hmm. to bringing a kid in class first day, two sticks going, let's go. And then and the, <laughs> the kids banging himself off the elbow, the back of the head. Mom's <laughs> looking at him like, this isn't really working. I mean, right. if a child comes into a class or somebody and the first lesson they take, they feel terrible. There's a good chance they're not coming back. Exactly. So the progression has to match exactly who it is that you're working with to get them through the progression. Right. Right. So, yeah. I mean, I think it takes about 10 years to get good martial arts. So that's our window is 10 years. We, we don't have any fallacies about how quickly that we can accomplish that goal. When you say, when you say that's your window, are you saying your goal is your, your retention goal is 10 years? Yes, absolutely. Well, I think it takes about 10 years to get good. It does. You know, I, um, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a pilot. I fly a small airplane. And when I got my pilot's license, just because I got the license, I wasn't ready right. to fly my mom and dad yet. Right. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> even though you get the license, it doesn't mean that you're ready. And I think that's kind of what becoming a black belt is to some degree or becoming a new instructor. You may have the title, but you haven't had the experience yet. Yeah. So 10 years to me is like a, is a good number and it's a good foundation for us to give the parents to say, this is going to take 10 years or to say to our instructors, this is going to take 10 years. It just, just opens people's mind a little bit. That's all. Okay. So, so if, if, if 10, is that, that's interesting. Cause I've never heard anybody express it that way. A anybody actually say upfront that a retention goal could be or should be about mm -hmm. 10 years for, for a student. Mm -hmm. I've never heard anybody say, say that before, but it makes perfect sense. But instead, what you hear in the industry is, oh, well, they're going to quit inside of 
you know, six months or, or, or I mean, there, there's even been the time where it was like, well, let's get as much money as we can from them up right. front right. because they're going to be gone. Right. Well, they're gone in months, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll be gone in three years. Yep. So we have Black Belt Club, which is a 36 month contract. Mm -hmm. And then we don't expect to see them anymore. Mm -hmm. But here you're being radical and saying, no, 10 years is a thing is, is, well, is a Imagine walking into this new school that you're talking about, and mm -hmm. it's maybe it's visual, maybe it's a painting, but it's a journey. Here's year one, here's year two, you know, and then here's what you'll experience along this journey. Um, all of a sudden, it looks like makes three years look like nothing because right. we're looking at it in a, in a bigger perspective, right? Yeah, but but see, what you're also talking about, forget martial art, you're just talking about the amount of time that it takes to become almost like a real human being. Good at anything. It's <laughs> yeah. not just martial arts. Piloting, <laughs> same thing. I'm still working on piloting, right? You're, you're right. 15 years later. So it, like my golf game, whew, still working on that. My snowboarding, yeah. still work. Like life is a process. There is no end. There is no beginning. It's just a continuation, right? Yeah. And, and we keep evolving as we rise in that circle, but we keep growing. We keep refining. So how then do we deal best with the notion that when it comes to developing themselves, it's only like one in a hundred that's going to make it, or it's only like one in a hundred that's even interested in the pinnacles of self-development. So <clears throat> there's uh, three E's, empowerment, education, entertainment. Which one is the most popular? Entertainment. Hands down. Which one is the least? Empowerment. Empowerment. It's by far the least. Isn't right. but it's the one we need the most. Yeah. So we need to stop being spectators and start being active in our life intentionally. Mm -hmm. Right? You and I were talking the other day. <clears throat> so for me, it's about how do I define the most special things that we do at mastery that are most valuable. For example, this may or may not be received well, but I'm going to say it anyhow. There's no correlation in life between having a great sidekick and a great life. There's plenty of people with, I mean, a phenomenal sidekick, but that yeah. sidekick alone doesn't mean that they put the pieces of their life together, right? Relationship and yeah. discipline and structure and just having doing something they really love. Um, having financial discipline. So right. there's no correlation. So what I'm mm -hmm. after with mastery is how do I define the most valuable things in our program? And then how do we identify them and then define them and then share them with the people we're trying to attract with that business so that I can say to mom, here's the martial arts, but here are the six underlining DNA to what we're going to teach your child. Yeah. And one of them is the yes, I can attitude. Another one is failure is your friend. Part of our script in our program is parents, when you fail their child, they get upset. But when we reframe it in such a way, reframe it and say, parents, this failure is an opportunity to, to, to help your child grow because they're going to fail. I mean, we fail. All of us fail in our life every day. Mm -hmm. But we, the quicker we can recover, the more successful, the chance of being successful will be greater. There are some people that failed at something nine years ago and they're still depressed. They, they never learn how to get themselves out of it. So, so these are two values in mastery that we're using to promote. But to me, yeah. that, that's more valuable than, than uh, the kick of the punch could ever be. So going back to the imaginary school. Sure. So let's say this guy, he's got it up and running. Now he's got one or two people helping out. His structure There's got to be basics, basic training, and then there's got to be advanced level training. So, so from, from the little that I know about the traditional martial art, there's like basics training, black belt training, um, master's club leadership. Is that an indispensable structure for martial arts schools regardless? We enroll students at white belt right down to leadership. Some enroll in that membership right away, and then we have a class plan that supports it. Mm -hmm. So there are two paths that you can take in our program. 
One is significantly better than the other, but it's not up to us. It's up to the family to decide what's right, what's based on their schedule, how much time a week they're willing to put into it, where their head is now as a parent and what they see the world as. Right. That's not something we can control. We can just offer it and then, then yeah. allow them to select their path. But going back to structure, right, before you even get to what you're trying to address, there's a structure to the schedule. Yeah. There's a structure to the way the class plan is. There's a structure to the way we prepare an instructor to deliver that class. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. See, and th that's why, like, one of our concerns was that some of the people who might see this conversation between us will be like, oh, well, they're, they're just talking about, about selling, right. you know, karate, selling right. martial arts. But that's not at all what right. we're talking about. Right. We're talking about structure for yourself, right. structure for your own life, right? right? Because without that, yep. nobody, so, so yeah, I mean, and I think that that's one of the reasons why sometimes even so-called martial artists, they don't realize how to apply the philosophies of martial arts. Bingo. Outside. Bingo. Is, <laughs> if, I don't know if Sifu Neo is on this right now, but when I explained to him my leadership and staff development program, he said to me, this is genius. Where did you learn this from? I said, I learned it from you. He goes, what do you mean? And then I started to point out all the philosophies in JKD. And I showed right. it to him how it was working in my program. And he was like, kind of like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. He didn't see it. He didn't see the parallel. I get it right, right. away. And so I Tom it. Tomorrow, yeah, in, in uh, tomorrow's broadcast, uh, I'm doing a, a Q and A, so I've collected a bunch of questions that I have that I've fielded over the years, and one of them actually is, how do you apply Jeet Kune Do philosophies mm -hmm. outside of martial mm -hmm. art? And um, I had an opportunity to view somebody else who had tried to answer the question, and his answer was a list of Bruce Lee quotes. <laughs> <laughs> right? I thought, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that's 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 well, that's a great. We we memorize first to internalize, right? So yeah. to go back to structure, uh, you can already see that this hair. Luckily, I have some. But every other Wednesday at twelve thirty, I get a haircut, and mm -hmm. because of that, I don't have to remember it or put it in a schedule. Every Monday and Wednesday from ten to twelve for the last fifteen years, we have a staff meeting with my group. Yeah, I don't ever miss it. Fifteen right. years, so I know. Two years from now, on a Monday at 10 o'clock, I'm going to be at my staff training. <laughs> it doesn't change. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what you're alluding to. How do you use this idea to make your life easier, to not need an appointment scheduler like most yeah. people do? So. Well, la last, last, um, last week, I showed uh, the, the, the viewers of the broadcast um, some pages from The Art of Expressing the Human Body. So it was actually... Um, reproductions of Bruce Lee's day timer, mm -hmm. which is just like one of the world's greatest depictions of discipline and dedication because it was everyday training and it, and there was, again, we'll, we'll, we've been overusing the word mm -hmm. structure, mm -hmm. to it. you know, mm -hmm. nothing a about it. So, so we have, at the far end, we have this thing called Jeet Kune Do, and the ultimate goal is formlessness, right? So it's like, it's like my shirt, right? So respond like an echo, you know, moving, right? Be like, I mean, all, all this stuff. But he's one of the most disciplined and structured people in the world. Mm -hmm. You see? And I think that, that that's one of the conundrums, I think. The, the idea of formlessness but this belief that you can achieve formlessness by being formless right from the get go, which. Well, you need, you need, work. you need training wheels at first. Right. For everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you about um, competition, the idea of competition. We talked earlier about, uh, you know, Taekwondo being um, probably the most popular uh, art that there is out there. But I think after uh, UFC won in 1993, then we saw the, the, the constant or consistent rise in popularity 
of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, and MMA. So a lot of people have this idea that, that you, you've got you've to be involved in the thing that's the, the so-called best. So when, when you hear the word competition, what does that mean to you? Uh, an opportunity for us to connect our students. We do two tournaments a year for mastery. They're closed in-house and completely self-sustained within our group. So mm -hmm. all of our teenage future instructors are the judges, the parents are involved, our staff's involved. So we use it as a get-together, uh, friendly competition, training environment for our future instructors, promotional, where we take all the people that have opted into our website and we invite them to an open, we call it an open house, but it's a tournament, but they don't know any yeah. better. So we give, I'm trying to maximize the experience as much as I can in layers, right? So to me, yeah. it's just a great opportunity for people to, uh, to be involved in a tournament setting, to feel what that feels like in front, uh, by themselves in front of everybody. We want to give them that experience. So we do it twice a year. Okay. But, but we, and, don't, um, we don't go to any other tournaments. We don't. Um, right. We don't. Yeah. So um, in 1987, the May 1987 uh, issue of Esquire magazine was the, the cover story was an article by the, the late Aikido player, uh, George Leonard, and it was all about mastery. And I had asked you earlier if that article played a role in it. Have you, have you ever, have you read the article? No, sir. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? I don't. Okay. Then I'll be sure, I'll be sure to send it to you, Thank um, you. when, when, when we, when we finish this. Cause I think, um, uh, I mean, in appreciation for all the stuff I've gotten from you <laughs> over the years. Right. And I, um, so I want to, I want to ask you something else. Um, So this was a concept, this is something that I thought of uh, a number of years ago. There's a saying, what you see is what you get, right? Was he wicked? Okay. And most people treat that as, if I say to you, what you see is what you get. I'm saying what you see in me, right, is what you'll get from me. And then I forget what exactly it is that I was reading. But somebody took that statement and turned it on its head for me. And now the what you see is what you get is reversed. So it's really saying what I see is what I get. Mm -hmm. You see, so we're not externalizing it. Mm -hmm. We're internalizing it. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how does a person go about improving his or her I'll, I'll, I'll coin a phrase, self-vision. How do you go about improving the vision of what you see for yourself? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, somebody asked me yesterday in a private message, how do I define success or happiness? Mm -hmm. And I, I said to him, here's the person you want to become. Here's where you currently are. Focus on the gap. As that gap becomes closer and closer and closer, you're living the life exactly the way you're trying to live. Mm -hmm. So there, for example, in martial arts, you may have some instructors who are teaching martial arts on the floor and everybody's looking at them. So they're acting a certain way because they're being held accountable. And then when they're not in that environment, they're at home or wherever, they act a different way. Mm -hmm. It's that gap the distance between where you want to be and where you are that defines your success for me. Right? Right. So you can live, if, I, if I'm at Mastery teaching a martial arts lesson and people are watching me and I'm trying to be on my best behavior, well, maybe my best behavior is my normal behavior. Maybe I should all, that should, and that takes work, right? I mean, it's a lot of work to work on yourself at that level. Um, okay. What, um, what about, did I ask you this before, is retention the key or one of the keys to martial arts success? I mean, not really. No. Nope. So you like the philosophy early I gave you, I'll give you this one. It's our goal when we train a student from white to black belt 
to be able mm -hmm. to defend themselves, wait for it, against somebody who has no training of fighting at all. Yeah. And then for the next level, we want them to be able to defend themselves against someone who's had some training. Yeah. Right? And then that's how we think about it. And then for my instructors, I want them to defend themselves against anybody than, let's say, a professional MMA cage fighter. Right? So at what level in that progression do you not need you, – I mean, you always need to train to stay healthy. But mm -hmm. when don't you need any more martial arts training? Meaning for right. what this self-protection of it, right? Yeah. And I know that might be a foreign kind of concept for people. But, yeah, to be successful in martial arts school, how do you attract people that want to hear your message? And then the message that they heard on Facebook or in their ad or somebody talking about your program, when they come to the school, this congruency, they see it. Yeah. They look around and they see it. Then they start taking classes and they feel it more. Right. Okay. So now yeah. we have total congruency. When we have that level of alignment, then that's how you grow your school. Okay. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to hit you with one more thing. Good. Uh, Cause you know, I, I, I appreciate this, but we, maybe we can, we can uh, schedule a, another talk when, when you don't have such an important meeting. So here's, here's the scenario. It's another thing that we hear about all the time. People go, Oh, you know, I, if I, I wish I could get the chance to come back right? And come back with the brain that I've developed in this lifetime, right? So it's kind of a twist on that scenario. You do get to come back, but you cannot come back with the brain that you've developed in this lifetime. What you can do, however, is use your current brain to set up that future time when you come back. So here's the question using the current brain, using the current knowledge to prepare for this ability to come back. You get to pick one human quality, one human trait, and one skill. What do you pick? Great question. Um, great question. Human trait. I, I would choose... I, I think it's just uh, consistency, like never okay. giving up that spirit to just, just, I mean, my wife knows why mastery, she now knows why it's so successful. She's, she calls me a robot. I mean, at 6 a.m., I'm out of bed with a smile on my face and I can't wait to get to work. Like my right. brain had been working on it all night, what I was going to do for the first yeah. four hours of my day. And I'm up yeah. and boom, here I go. And so... It's that level of consistency I see people lack. They, they don't have it. They can't stay focused on any one thing for any length of time to get them the outcome that they're trying to achieve. They get distracted. Okay. So I would definitely say consistency. The skill um, comes out of that consistency. I don't even know if I need it. I could just show up <laughs> with consistency. I think that would be enough. But um, I would say if I could start with something – Sooner, it would be the ability to communicate and connect with everybody. Okay. So consistency and... Communication. Is communicativeness a word? I guess it could be for this. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but you, your, your ability to relate. Um, yeah. I mean, I've said to you a few times uh, certain things about how I think. And you mm -hmm. quickly said, I've never heard that before and I like it. That's communication. Saying it yeah. in a way to the people who are going to receive it in a way that they need to hear it from their way. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. a skill in itself. Okay. All right. So listen, I, I appreciate it. Um, we'll do this again because there, sure. there's, there are tons more. Um, I like the, the poster. For those of you who can't see the poster in, oh, yeah. in the back. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so, that, was, uh, that was how many years ago? That was a couple of years ago, wasn't it? 2010. Yeah. So we yeah. Have, wow. We have Guru's uh, right here. We have uh, Sifu Neo. We got Salem. And Excellent. Uh, this might have been. I think this is Joel. That was probably. Yeah. yeah. I think that is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So listen, it's been a pleasure, right? Um, if uh, if people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way? Uh, right through Facebook, I suppose. I mean, if you're, okay. a, if you're a school owner, you know that I, I have a group that I work with. 
Um, it's an open forum that I share my ideas and thoughts about running a school, managing, leading, running your own life and how they all relate. Um, we can put a link in there if you want and, and uh, okay. put there. If people want to come join it. Obviously, it's free. They just, it's a private group, so they just have to ask to join and I'll invite yeah. them in. All right. Thank you. Okay. Greg Horton, my pleasure. Right. Good to see you again. Okay, sir. we'll do this again. All right. All right, good. everybody. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, signing off from uh, Jeet Kune Do Dialogues, episode number five. You guys have a, a great rest of the day, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.